Rick's Corner, I have guests today, Jeff Bornstein and his wife, Kimberly. Hey, and uh, they're magicians, but there's a history before that with Jeff and I. Going back about 20 years, we used to work out together at Gold's Gym up in Northridge. Um, was that the first gym? Uh, did you do Don Peters? No, actually, it was not sexually, but I know him. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing Don's gone now. Huh? Yeah, he's gone now. <laughs> actually, I think it was Gold's. No, it was Don Peters, and then Gold's bought it on Sherman. This was on on Sherman Way. Yeah, I didn't go there. Okay. No, it was so, Northridge. So it'd be Northridge, yeah. All right, so you were training back then <clears throat> uh, to be a bodybuilder or for yes. comp competition or just for fun? Uh, all the above, and Albert Beckles trained me, actually, for the Palm Springs Classic. Albert's still around. Is he? He's 80 now. Looks Actually, right. I did an interview with him. Well, I saw him. On, I saw him on Rick's corner, you know, yeah. and uh, he looked great, man. I was like, he didn't. He still, still wearing the same hat too. I think he's still yeah. pushing 100 pound dumbbells. Damn, man. 150s or something like that. That's, That's crazy. Fun. I don't know why, but Albert, um, good guy. Good did guy. you uh, get into? You didn't get into bodybuilding, did you? No, I did not. <clears throat> why? Mm -hmm. More cow tipping. Why do you look so tall? I'm setting up straight. Okay, I am too, but it doesn't work. <laughs> Hold on. Um, so, did you compete? Yes, Palm Springs Classic uh, uh, in 1985 and. Uh, remember Northridge? I don't even, I haven't been to Northridge in a long time. Is it still there, Northridge? Cool. Yeah, but I think it's 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 mainly for senior citizens now. They've changed it around. Well, you should be there. You're there. Right? Yeah, that's no, right. I'm on the senior program. <laughs> but they had a, they had a posing room. Remember the posing room? Yeah. Uh, um, Albert would go in there with me five times a week. He would just sit in there and just show me how to do my you know strike a you know a side chest you know delt you know double bicep and he helped me out a lot. It was really cool. He knows a lot. He, that's yeah, no he taught me a lot. Well, you did that for how many years? Uh. Gosh, uh, bodybuilding, comp competing? Yeah. Oh, competing? Um, five years. Five years. I started off actually at Mapes Apes. Remember that? I do. Out in Simi? Yes. Yep. Todd Mape. Yeah. And um, Mape. Dale Adrian. Remember Dale yeah. Adrian? Sure. Dale Adrian, um, I think it was. Oh, and um, R was, did Ray? No. Uh, yeah, Dale Ray Adrian. Boone? Ray Boone. Yeah. Yeah, Ray Boone. Yeah, were well, the two big names out there back then. Well, Dale and I did uh, Mr. San Pedro contest together. D uh, Ray worked out at Northridge. I think he was selling cars. He was in good shape. Ray and and I'll never forget uh, Ray. Always drink. Always came in with a big gulp. Just a big cup of Coca Cola. You'd sip that during his workout. All right. I never, I never got that. I don't, I don't understand that. Is is, uh, <clears throat> is Adrian still around? I don't know. No. I have no idea. Most of my friends are dead. Yeah. It's just the way it is. <laughs> I'm still kicking. I think I got like uh, 30 days left on my contract. Or, or on the camera. Anyway. On the camera, yeah. yeah on the camera. 30 seconds left on yeah. that. Yeah. Um, from bodybuilding, you went in to do stunt work. Uh, I was actually doing stunt work while I was doing bodybuilding, but I was really more... Uh, um, I was so into the, into the working out thing <clears throat> that I, my, my dad bought me... When I was 13, I am the epitome. I'm the role model of that... On the back of the uh, comic, uh, with the kickstand in your kick face. Santa face. Yeah. My dad bought me a bull worker. Oh, remember bull workers? Yeah, I sure. Did. Okay, isometrics. <clears throat> you will see results in you know fourteen whatever it was, and I started seeing results. I was like, damn. Whether well, it was well, a whether well, it was a placebo no. or not, I don't know. But no, it, sure it works. It's any kind of resistance <laughs> works. But when I re used to read Weeders magazine, it says pack on twenty pounds of muscle <laughs> in thirty days. I, when I, my visual was pack it on, mm -hmm. I took hamburger meat and I packed it on my. <laughs> all of my legs, and I, I packed on all this muscle. How do you pack on muscle in 30 days? Right. You know, I mean, it was impossible. Right. Yvonne and Pierre Brunet were the twin brothers that he used to uh, publicize out of Canada. They were bodybuilders. <clears throat> I'm going back to 1930. Nah, it's, uh, 31. <laughs> Come on, be real. Don't. don't. And it <laughs> kind of inspired me to go into bodybuilding. But um, a lot of guys write me today, and they, they, they ask me about training with Arnold and how do you get so big. And one guy said to me, he says, how do I... I, I, I how, do I have to gain fat to gain muscle? Because I eat like 5,000 mm. calories a day. And I'm wow. telling them, no, you don't, because why? if you're going to put fat on, you're going to detract <laughs> from the muscle. So just take it slow and let it build mm. gradually, because they don't, people don't know how to eat. If, amen. Yeah. It's the whole key to the whole thing. <clears throat> diet, you, diet, diet. Well, that's true. That's what we were just talking about mm. yesterday, because my frustration is I'll lose <laughs> and then... I'll gain like maybe that little bit back, yeah. but it's just constantly like up and down, up and down, up Some and of it's down. water weight. Yeah, well, I can always take that 10 pounds off. It'll yeah. take me just like a couple of weeks, yeah. but it's then... Did you leave it at the door? Yeah, I left it out the door okay. there, All but I still got 10 more. We have carry on. We brought carry on. <laughs> the extra weight, yeah. my God. Um, stunt work, too. I mean, I've had people write in, they say they want to become stunt, <laughs> stunt people. That's a tough business to get into. It Well, back in the day, it, it was sort of now it's almost like you know forget it but now the stunts today are so much <coughs> different than they yeah. were back then I mean some of the um, uh, 
stuff that you don't see that you didn't see back then. Uh, good example. Remember the very beginning of, of Casino Royale, the yeah. new one. Yeah. And the guys, I forgot what they call them, they call them, call them runners or something. Yeah. These guys doing. I'm like, even back then in the day, I was like, what? That was a great opening. Oh yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. You know. Really but uh, stunts, you know, and uh, back in the day, I was always a car guy and a fight guy. You know, you got your high fall guys. Yeah. I was a guy who did precision driving. And my thing was fights, and I was good to go. And everyone has their specialty. And I do. Yeah, you do. I was just standing for the, the romantic lead. For the what? Romantic lead. When he got down to the nitty gritty where he had to have the act of what they were going to do, they called me in to fill the, fill the bill. Oh. <laughs> and then he'd step out, I'd step in, and then he'd take over again. Wow. No, wow. I, I, they always, she, she believes this. Yeah? She, I'm like, wow. <laughs> you step in this is cool. Yeah. Um, they always call me for the wrestling stunts or the wrestling sure. coordinating because yeah. that's what I do, and, and that's fine with me, but. I'm a little tired of that. Yeah, and, and well, you know, you can only hit the ground so much, yeah. you know, which is I stopped yeah. hitting the ground a while ago, and, and the driving, which I love the driving. But working with Gene, I learned so much from Gene LaBelle, one yeah. of my heroes. And, I mean, you know the story about him and Seagal, right? Of course. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a... That's a legend. He put a choke on me in El Pollo Loco the other day. Did he? I knew it was. My son said, here comes Gene, here goes the choke. I said, not while I got chicken in my mouth, please. <laughs> now, is there a way to get out of that hold, by the way? There's, you just hit him in the okay, head with the thumb. Okay, better yet, is there a way to get out of the hold from Gene? Uh, probably not. No? No, he chokes everybody out, <laughs> makes them all pass out. And he's 75 years Tell old. Tell Kimberly what it is, because she doesn't know the story. Gene LaBelle was a stuntman way, way back. Still and, is. And he was a wrestler. And I started wrestling with him in the mid-60s. Mm -hmm. And he had a, a big reputation then. But he always treated me great. Always brought me in for stunt work. Always got me bookings on things. He just lives up the street. Mm -hmm. But he's tough. I mean, he's if you looked at him, he's very unassuming. He's heavy, red hair, just looks like he can hardly move. He took three guys out in the park that jumped him once. But on the set of uh, one of the shows, Stephen Seagal had threatened him. And Gene said, don't. Don't ever let me get behind you. And he did, and he choked Steven Seagal out in front of ten stunt guys, and he peed his pants. That was the end of Steven Seagal. Real? For yeah, real, yeah, yeah, for, for real. real. That's how Gene is. He's he's no one to mess with. Okay, don't make Gene mad. No, don't make him. It takes a lot to get him mad, though. He's too even tempered. The guy's the biggest freaking teddy bear, man. I yeah. love the guy to death, man. He's awesome. Yeah, those are called teddy bears. Hi, Gene. <laughs> All right, so you had bodybuilding. They went into stunts. Uh -huh. And then uh, I was really surprised when I found out, and it was years back, that you went into magic. Mm -hmm. But I, I realized that when I didn't see you anymore, I figured you disappeared. <laughs> oh, but I'm... <laughs> For real. And guess what? I told you I'd be back. <laughs> yeah, here you are. Here you are. Well, actually, um, and... I, I can only speak for myself, but I can guesstimate that this is this is probably across the board for a lot of guys. And like you talk, you were talking about earlier before we started taping here, is that a lot oh, of oh, there's no film on that camera uh, before we started okay. digitizing. Okay, hold on. There's the <laughs> oh, there, there it go. is. Hey, he'll tell you later what that means. Uh, <laughs> uh, how how the young kids call and you say, hey, stay in school because you never know, you know, yeah. you know, and because you want to get into wrestling. Well, I didn't have any direction growing. I had direction. Let me reiterate that. I always knew I wanted to be a magician. Oh no! I mean, since I was ten years old, I've been doing magic. Yeah. And I've been doing stunts, and not to name drop, but I grew up with a few guys in the business: Steve McQueen's son, Chad. Yeah. Okay, and Corey Eubanks, Bob yeah. Eubanks' son. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, Ronnie Rondell and I, we we used to race motorcycles. Right them. Indian Dunes. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got into it. I was not nepotized or anything like that. So we'd hang out, do our things. We'd do little show, little movies, uh, uh, shows, stunt shows on the weekends for the family. And then when I wasn't hanging out with the stunt guys. And it was like, Steve McQueen, big deal. Hey, let's go out and play, Reed. You know, come on, you know, let's go out and play. The name didn't matter. It did, had no attachment to it. Or if I wasn't hanging out with the stunt guys, then I would do a, a magic show for the family and, and the neighbors on Saturdays. I'd come out with my bathrobe, you know, and I'd be magic boy, you know. So I guess, in a sense, I've had direction, but I was always a really not a good student in school. It's like I never went to school. I did. I got a diploma, finally, at, I think at 19 years old. But fast forward... Uh, from 16 to 22, I was a bouncer, you know, and that's how I made my income. Uh, and I would, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, uh, you're leaving out a part though. Okay. What? He used to be a stripper. Should I see. Oh, we all did that. See? I, I had never went out with anyone that was a stripper before. All these stories and were just still like not so going interesting out with for me. I was <laughs> this just is, like, this, wow. is, this is a well guarded secret. Remember Filthy McNasty's? <laughs> yeah. I used to dance there. Well, I understand that. I knew a lot of guys who did this kind of stuff. <laughs> this is a well guarded secret because I never ever said this to anybody except a few. I actually did Playgirl back in the 70s. Did you? I remember you told me that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 2,000 bucks was a lot of money back then. Oh, yeah. It's still a lot and of no, money. No, right you, right you can't see the photos. I'm not going to show <laughs> But I did it. Yeah, I did it. Well, I've got a little porn story I could share, or not, but <laughs> well, let me let me ask you this. So you got into magic. So I got into magic, and and as I was bouncing, as yeah. I was playing bouncer, I always had a deck of cards in my hand. 
always. As people have check IDs, hey, you want to see a card trick? I'd steal watches off people's wrists, do that kind of a thing. And that's really, no matter what, the common thread was always magic, 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 magic. I loved being on stage, and that's my drug of choice. If Absolutely. You, will, you know, and I love being in front of the camera, whether it's this or doing stunts or doesn't acting. Doesn't matter, right? Know, doesn't matter. I love to entertain. So, to this day, from ten, from age ten to now, uh, I, I love doing. I love live entertainment, and that's just what I do. Well, it's it's the same thing. And when you when I asked, told you to come in the gate, and you said it's an illusion. Well, pro wrestling is an illusion as well. What we do on stage, or what we do in the ring in front of people, is to get them to believe what we do is real. And um, a, a lot of times it ends up being that way because of egos and tempers. But for the most part, we're trying to put a, a, a point across that what we're doing is really actually happening. And you may not see it because it's a diversion, and you want to get the audience up and down by things you do, but that's an illusion as well. So is it okay to talk about the, the illusion stuff? about Because I had some questions I want to ask you about that. About the wrestling? Yeah. Oh, I can't let you know. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, um, most of it is it's all choreographed, right? Well, it, it it is now. A lot of the guys want to work out a whole match. We went last night. Like back in the, the Freddie Blassie days. No, really. No, I'd go. I'd see my name on a board and say, "You're working with so and so. You got 15 minutes. What's the finish?" Wow. And I wouldn't know the guy until I got in the ring. And we just feel the pulse of the audience, just like you feel if they're with you or if they're not, and you have to change gears like a comedian would. Right. Um, and hopefully you can work with them. And then during the 80s or late 70s, 80s, they brought all the uh, the Mexican wrestlers up from Mexico. They didn't speak English, so when I got in the ring with them, I didn't know what to say because yeah. I didn't speak Spanish. So we just had to go by feel. And I remember a guy hit me hard a couple of times. I said, no more potatoes, because they're called potatoes. Did it again, I grabbed his mask, and I belted him in the forehead and knocked him out. I said, now you'll learn. Wow. wow. Learn to communicate. Wow. Learn to communicate. So, but stuff like with the chairs. I chairs mean, are real. But chairs are real, but I, it, it hurts, but it doesn't, the, uh, and I'm it's asking. It still would have to hurt. You have to know how to throw the chair, because yeah. you have to hit the it's flat. It's like throwing a punch in, in a movie. It's a, right. a movie hit. Or, or Yeah, but you have to hit flat. If you hit... Uh, slight angle, angle the, the corner of the chair hits it, you, it splits your head open. Okay, wow. so so it, it does it does make connection. It does hurt, but yeah, it's, it's not it's not like we it's not like it's really being conveyed kind of a thing. Like I mean, you're gonna go down. You're gonna go down. You're gonna get hit. My, so my son hits me with chairs when we wrestle. I mean, he hit me hard across mm -hmm. the back. But sure, I felt it. Mm -hmm. I don't like to take it in the head because my head cuts too easy. Okay. And last night they threw chairs and two guys got hit in the head hard, but they took them. They had hair to, to pad a little bit. Mm. But it's just the way you do it, and it, it takes practice. And okay. You don't want to start out doing that if you don't know what you're doing because you'll hurt somebody. Sure. Let's move up a level, yep. level here. Yep. I have another question. Okay. So you did magic, uh -huh. and then you ran into this nice lady. Yes. And did you pull her out of a hat like a rabbit or what? Here's the short version. Um, I was doing the, I don't know if I told you the story or not. Um, I was doing the Match.com dating thing. Yeah. And, you know, um, and, you know, for out there in video land, when you find someone on Match.com, in fact, we didn't even look like this, okay? I'm, I actually look like Rick, and Rick looks like me. Right. Okay? <laughs> I, I don't lucky, know how... You're a lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> no one looks like they do on Match.com, so <clears throat> I, I bought the, the one-month uh, prescription. Prescription? Uh, s s prescription. From, your doc from your doctor? <laughs> it should have been a prescription, right? <laughs> See, I, knew, I had the joke, and I... I, yeah. I the doctor says I need a date. Punchline. Screwed up. Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I bought one month, and, and uh, for two weeks, I, I was, you know, none of these women look like this. And I finally said, okay, screw it. And I was headlining the comedy club out in Oklahoma called Looney Bin. And I figured, okay, you know what? I'm gonna, this is before MySpace even was uh, launched. And I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put out a mass email, and I'm going to send out in Oklahoma, hey, come on up to the Looney Bin, put you on my comp list, buy your drinks, blah, blah, blah. Mention my name. You there? You'll get in. Yeah, that's where she's from, Oklahoma. I know that. Mm -hmm. what Oklahoma was the question? City. That's where you found her? Yes, Oklahoma City. I tried Match.com. I didn't match up with anybody. And you should have went to Oklahoma. <laughs> you know how to count They rolled back. They said, you're no match. I'm sorry. I said, I've had 5,000 wrestling matches. i got to have one match out there. <laughs> You'd have to have one. I can't. Oh, but you're so okay. handsome. I can't find it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> wow. I think it's the missing finger. No, you need to cut off the other four. No. This this is this this has its disadvantages. I went to see a horror film the other night and I get scared. Uh huh. So oh, I, did you? I tried to hide my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I could not hide my eyes no matter what. So you met Kimberly and what did you think when you saw her? Oh well, hey, here we were. Well I can see. Six years later. Uh, it has I, been six uh, years. I was very infatuated by you, but now I think it's her. Well, go ahead, man. <laughs> Stand in line. <laughs> get behind. That's the thing. I always gotta wait. No, don't get behind. <laughs> my my name in line is next. <laughs>